knocked out a good one. Woo! Yeah, buddy. Big round. Ah, my ears. Wow, we just knocked that buck down. All yeah. oh, that palmation. I told you you were going to go back. Wow. Huh? <laughs> so what do you think, buddy? He's craziest, Woo! craziest hunt I've ever been on. We spend a day crossing the border and driving hours on a dirt road to our remote destination. We take residence in a ranch house that has been in the same family for over 200 years. Some of us have come looking for camaraderie, some for a trophy, and others to get a glimpse of remote wilderness. We're out here on day one here at the ranch and we're headed out to a, a couple spots that we think that we're going to be productive and we've got John here and Dan in the back. They're both totally ready to to get a coos deer. This will be their first. And we're trying to get in a nice position where we can see that first light looking with the sun. So we've glassed up a, a few bucks now. Um, we've got one here that I'm looking at that's really tall, um, nice long points all the way around, three by three, but uh, it really doesn't have any eye guards if they're broken off or uh, if they're just kind of nubs. But it's really hard, but it's the first day and we're seeing lots of, what are we at guys, like eight bucks or so this morning, something like that. You know, we're definitely seeing them. They're a fantastic ranch and I'll show you this buck here. Buck doe ratio is pretty good. It's almost about 50-50. We're definitely rutting hard right now. We've seen we've seen some bucks hitting the trees, um, chasing does up and around the hill a little bit. I'm able to get pretty good footage using a digiscope adapter, my phone on a 85 millimeter Zeiss spotting scope. On this private ranch, the deer were actually not too scared of the vehicles. You can see this one just outside the window. Corner real quick, walking through there. They always look big when they're walking away and they tuck their ears back. Evening of that first day, um, so far just this evening we've seen four bucks. I just glassed one up right here, far away, but it looked a little bit smaller. We're seeing a lot like that and uh, that one was pretty nice this morning. Looked like the other guys in camp were seeing them. Uh, we ended up going back for lunch, so that's nice. Now we're just out, about to, it's about 4 p.m. Yeah. We're here of the morning of the second day, and uh, we glassed up a couple bucks this morning, and we saw one buck that was pretty good in the morning. So we tried to get on it, and as soon as we got on it from one side of the hill, it went over to the top, and then we went around the other side of the hill, and it's kind of playing playing us a little bit. Today's a lot clearer than it was yesterday. Right now we're evening of the second day here. Um, we just saw three bucks. One of them was pretty good. We decided to pass it again. Low 90s, high 80s. Here we are, day three. I'm on top of the hill. I've got that kind of rock tower I'm gonna go get on top of. Should give me a like 200 degree view. This is a domestic ram that I glassed up, but it's pretty wild as it uh, walks across the hillside. Wherever you have lots of coos deer, you're always going to have mountain lions. They're always so stealthy looking as they walk around. I'm always amazed by how much life there is down there. These are kawadi. They live in a family pack, and they're always rolling over rocks looking for small vertebrates and insects. Adult male Cotamunde are solitary animals. They're only really seen with their pack during mating season. The closest relative to these omnivores is the raccoon. This morning started a little slower. Well, we first glassed up some bedded deer and then the bucks started to get up and start moving a little bit. And we saw maybe about three bucks. We got sack lunch to go and grinded out the afternoon. His left side has broken G2 and G3. So it's just a main bean. It's pretty much. And on that right side, it's a big G2 and, and no G3. So he's like a two by and a big beam. As I plan my day, I try to have the first hour looking west with the rising sun and have the last hour looking east. So we have a we have a buck here that's really nice three by three. 
really nice deer. Uh, we're gonna try and close the distance. Right now he's at 600 yards bedded. I think we have, who's gonna shoot? You gonna you shoot? Want, you wanna try from there? I think I can let it fly from here. We don't need to though. <laughs> Let's close the distance. Okay. He's bedded too. I think a bedded, yeah, a bedded deer is probably smart to close. Time to get to at least 400 yards and uh, make it a little bit more the ethical shot. Not that these guys couldn't do it, but uh, just increase our chances a little bit on this buck. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Really nice deer. Dude, I'm deaf, that's a big round. <laughs> ah, my ears. Wow, bro. We just knocked that buck down. He's over there flopping, he's about done. Woo! There was a, there was a doe laying there too. Did you see what do you think, JP? Huh? <laughs> so what do you think, buddy? This is the craziest, Woo! craziest hunt I've ever been on. It's a, it's a hell of a awesome. cool hunt, isn't it? Cool you, country, <laughs> cool people. Yeah. Wow. You've got one hell of a wingman over there. <laughs> He's right. just like, no, dude, you shoot, you shoot, you shoot. He ran up there. He knocked down a cactus. He ran back. He got behind you. Shit, he's the guide. <laughs> Doing good, buddy. If you like this content and you want to see more, check out my other videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot. This is a javelina or a collared peccary. They're pretty common down there and they range between 30 and 50 pounds. Golds are one of the largest subspecies of turkey. They can still be found in parts of Arizona, New Mexico, and Northern Mexico. Here in these oaks and you kind of have quick shots, but we saw this buck down here at the, uh, there's a water hole down here in the bottom. And uh, there's three bucks there, three pretty good mature bucks. Uh, it's hard to get the camera on it because we're just kind of going quick, but uh, Dan just pulled the trigger, hammered it. So we're gonna go retrieve it here a little bit. Hammered. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's hammered. What round are you using there, Dan? 338. Eh, should <laughs> knock bad. him down. Shouldn't go very far. But uh, luckily there's a road right down to it. So um, <laughs> we'll probably walk down there, check it out, and then drive the car around. So perfect. Pretty solid hunt. Pretty solid mm -hmm. hunt. Good time. Fun well, shit, huh? <laughs> Completely different country than what you expect to be in in Mexico, that's for sure. Where do you normally hunt? The same stuff, opens and oaks. California. In California, though. <laughs> Nobody expects this kind of country to be here in Mexico. Yeah. I think we're Buddy. I'm not sure what I dropped dead. We what dropped did? something dead. <laughs> <laughs> so we got we're just about 300 yards away. We shot the buck up here and he ran down here. Don't look at my finger too much. It's pretty dirty. But right down here. Hunt. We're on the fourth day of the of, uh, five day hunt. Just knocked down this buck. And uh, I'm going to go check it out. Good deal. <laughs> yeah, I just had to drop two Dude, shots. We got him. We got him. Me. Uh you didn't even have to mention two. You got him down. <laughs> <laughs> good job, brother. And good job, amigo Juan. Beautiful country. We got that buck knocked down. We glassed him up from a little ways away and uh got over to a hill at uh, 300 yards away. We got 300 yards away and then we were able to knock down that beautiful buck right there. That's what we're here in this country for. Uh, opportunity at some of these great cruise deer and uh we're on an exceptional ranch we're seeing tons a day um some days we're seeing 18 20 bucks um so it's been it's been a lot of fun i've hunted a lot of different ranches but on this ranch i was so impressed just by the amount of deer and also the amount of bucks we were seeing every single day this buck was tall but a little bit narrow and he had a kind of a pinched g3 on one side so last night when we were driving through, we saw one of the biggest bucks I've seen in my life. He's got a big double main beam here in the area where we're at right now. Um, we only have one hunter left, Ryan. He's got, he's the only one with the tag that needs to be filled. So we're, everybody in camp is trying to get him on this giant double main beam bug. Um, we found the group of deer he was with last night and uh, haven't found him yet. So we're gonna try and get him now. Hey Corey, you Yeah, go ahead. 
picture of where Warren was. He said there's another book up there. He said it's not the big book. But he said it's good. We haven't done a look at it. He hasn't just can't get up to the trees. All right. I'm going to drive past Ryan right now. I'll have him get in the car and I'll drive him up there. We're trying to get set up on a buck right here. There was about four or five different bucks here in this little draw. And uh, they're holding super tight. I think there's one under us right here. We're trying to get Ryan on it. This is the same area where we saw that giant buck. I think we're set up on a really big three by three. We're going to get a good look at it before we pull the trigger. Look, look, look. So the buck on the right, he maybe has a third that's an inch on the left side. And it's just a two by two. It's just two by on the right side. Three by I saw and this. There's another third buck there. The one I saw low had good wow. Right there. There he is. Under that dead tree. I got him. Got him. Woo! <laughs> Knocked down a good one. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> good job. How many cooks are in the kitchen today is what I want to know. <laughs> oh my God, too many, right? Too many cooks. Ten chiefs. <laughs> this is what happens on the last day when everybody else is killed. You got like 11 hunters working towards one buck. <laughs> got a little mass to it. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Look at all that. And the neck. <laughs> That's a cool buck, guys. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Wow, look at all those like sticker things. Yeah. All that palmation. I told you he was in the back. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. That's cool. <laughs> Easy. That's so palmated. That's the best. Eye guards. Eye guards. <laughs> best eye guards of the camp so far. That's so showy. So that finishes out the hunt. We got this big buck down right here. We still, we are leaving a lot of good ones, but this is the last day, last buck that needed to get shot. Came out of nowhere and it's a, it's a giant. So it's an absolute blast to be able to get down here to Mexico and get down to guide. Um, that was a really fun hunt. We were seeing anywhere between a dozen to 20 bucks every single day. It was a little slow the first couple of days cause it was super windy. As it got cooler, we started bucks were just coming in kind of out of everywhere, especially with that rut and full swing. We had some unbroken deer, but we also had a lot of deer We're still with their points on it and they were rutting really hard, exposing themselves. Every day there would just be new bucks that we hadn't seen before. While I live on the East Coast now and I do a lot of fishing, I also come back to do as much hunting as I can. My dad's an outfitter here in, in Arizona and he takes people in New Mexico and Mexico all the time. So if you're interested in a pronghorn antelope hunt, a mule deer hunt, a coos whitetail hunt, an elk hunt, he can put you in for draws or set you up on a private ranch. So definitely find his link down below. It's in my description, Cola Blanca Outfitters. So don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot.